Are record trigger flows confusing? Sarah Pilzer breaks down record trigger flows, how to work with the order of execution, limitations, and much more. Welcome to 100 Days of Trailhead, where the tech community comes to learn Salesforce, learn tech, get inspired, and invest in ourselves. We are your trail guides, here to support you on your learning journey. We release videos weekly. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a video. In the description below, you can find links for everything we mention in this video, as well as books and resources we found useful. Visit our blog, 100daysoftrailhead.com, for other helpful Salesforce and tech content. Record trigger flows are more involved than screen flows, and today Sarah Pilzer helps walk you through the top five considerations you need to take when building your record trigger flows. Sarah is a marine biologist turned nonprofit geek who has discovered the amazing world of Salesforce through her job with the Country Dance and Song Society, participatory arts services nonprofit based in Western Massachusetts. She is passionate about using data to guide program and management decisions within the nonprofit industry and work to build efficient processes in Salesforce. Hi there. As a nonprofit Salesforce admin and self-identified Flownatic, I'm really excited to share with you my top five tips for working with record-triggered flows. Introduced in the Spring 20 release, record-triggered flows are another option for firing automation when Salesforce record is either created, updated, or deleted. They're very similar to process builder automations, but with some crucial differences. Which brings me to my first tip you need to understand when, in the order of execution, a record trigger flow will occur. Now, what do I mean by order of execution? Well, it's the series of actions and automations that occur whenever a record is saved in Salesforce. Now, I know this chart can be kind of overwhelming, but bear with me because for today's purposes, we only need to understand the general picture and not all the details. In fact, we're really only concerned with the first part of this diagram. So, when a user saves a record, it is first loaded from the database, and then automations such as validation rules, custom apex, and duplicate rules occur before an intermediate version of the record is saved, but not yet committed, to the database. It's important to note that each time a record is saved, even if it's not committed, that uses up resources and takes up time. After that initial save, Additional automations occur, including more custom apex, assignment rules, auto response rules, and workflow rules. And if any one of these automations updates the record, then a second subset round of automation is triggered. And that includes another intermediate save to the database. It's only after all of that that any process builders or auto launched flows that you have created are fired. And what happens if one of those process builders or flows updates or changes the record? Well, the whole cycle starts over again. And that causes even more saves to the database. So you can see how the resources and time really start to add up. In contrast, record triggered flows occur either here before the first intermediate save or immediately after the save. In either case, this type of flow unlike Process Builder, doesn't trigger a second cycle of saves, and that means fewer processor resources are used and you save time. So let's move into the actual flows themselves and what you need to know to build them. My next tip is to know that you can configure the specific conditions that will trigger the flow using the start element. There are two settings in the start element configuration. One, determines if the flow will fire based on whether the record is being created, updated, or deleted. And the second sets whether the flow occurs either before or after that initial database save we just discussed in the previous tip. Combining these two settings, you have up to eight different options for when the flow could trigger. You also have the ability to restrict which specific records will trigger the flow based on criteria from the record itself. This allows you to trigger the flow to only run on a subset of records that have certain field values. And like any other record conditions in Salesforce, you can specify the logic for multiple criteria to make sure you're only getting the exact records you want. 
Speaking of records, my third tip is to take advantage of the new special global variable in record triggered flows that provide efficient access to all the fields on the triggering record without needing to use a get element record in your flow. The record variable is available in assignment elements as the target for new values. If you're creating a before save flow, Salesforce will automatically save these updated values to the record when the flow ends. If your flow is an after save type, then you'll need to add an update records element before the end of the flow to update the special record variable. You can also use the record variable as a source for values to assign to other variables within your flow. You can even access values from fields on records related to your special record variable, provided those values were available before the record was saved. Now let's take a quick look at an example scenario to see the start element configurations and the special record variable in action. I work primarily in a nonprofit context, so for this demo, I've created a fictitious nonprofit that helps raise awareness about adorable otters. Let's say this organization wants to categorize incoming donations using a pick list donor level. We can automate that assignment based on the amount of the opportunity using a before save record triggered flow. Here we are in Flow Builder with our demo flow. I'll click on the start element so that we can see that it's been configured to run when a new record is created and it's gonna run the flow before that record is saved. We made this choice because all we're doing is updating that single record that launches the flow. We don't need to access any other uh, records or flow elements. We'll simply use a decision and an assignment to set fields on the special record global variable. We've also configured this flow to run on the object opportunity. There currently aren't any conditions, but we're only interested in accessing this flow on donation opportunity types. So I'm going to go ahead and set a condition where the type field on the opportunity is equal to donation. That means this flow will only run if the new opportunity has a type equal to donation. Next, let's take a look at the decision to see that record variable in action. Here we can see that there's different outcomes that depend on the record variable, the amount of that record variable being equal to a certain number. Let's add a new outcome for our platinum level. In this case, we're going to look up the special record variable. I'm going to choose the amount field. And we're going to say if that is greater than or equal to 2,500, then they're a platinum level donor. This adds a new branch to my decision, and I'm going to add an assignment. Always fill out a description, hot tip. And then again, I'm going to search for that special record variable. And I'm going to set the field donor level equal to platinum. We save our flow and we're all set. For the fourth tip, let's take a closer look at the differences between before and after save flows. Before save flows allow you to update a record that triggered the flow, but that's it. With an after save flow, you can also update records related to the triggered record. Before save flows are limited to the get records element that allows you to reference other records, but if you want to create, update, or delete additional records, you'll need an after save flow. Getting back to the Otter Appreciation Society, now, in addition to categorizing the opportunity, they want to update the pick list on the primary contact to reflect the appropriate donor level. For this example, we'll need an after save flow. This flow looks very similar to our before save flow, but if you click on the start element, you can see it's now been configured to run after the record is saved. We also have a new get records element, which looks up the primary contact that's related 
to that special record variable that represents the opportunity that starts the flow. We have the same decision element as before, assigning different donor levels based on the amount. But if we look at the assignment, in addition to assigning the donor level on that same record variable, we're now also assigning the donor level to the contact that we got using that primary contact lookup. Once we've made the assignment, we have to both update the primary contact record that we um, looked up, as well as updating the opportunity record using the special record variable. The fifth, final, and perhaps most important tip is to understand the limitations of record-triggered flows and know what they cannot do. Like with Process Builder, if you have multiple record-triggered flows that fire on the same object, you cannot guarantee what order they will fire in. Therefore, a bonus tip is to try to limit your record-triggered flows to have one per action per object. For example, if you only have one record-triggered flow for when a new opportunity is created, you can use decisions to route the flow actions to occur in a specific order. Unfortunately, the debug feature of Flow Builder won't work with record-triggered flows. The best way to check if these types of flows are working correctly is to activate them in a sandbox and create a few test records to see what happens. It's kind of like guess and check. Also, you cannot add subflows to a record-triggered flow without using custom Apex action. So if you need to string your flows together, you're going to have to use auto-launched flows. The last limitation is more of a caution that if you already have process builder automations in your org, they might overwrite changes made by a before save flow, since process builder will fire later in the order of execution. That wraps it up for my tips. Hope you have found them helpful and are excited to get started building record triggered flows. Thanks. And with that, we're at the end. What are you going to build with this new knowledge? Comment below. We would also love to hear what topics you want us to cover in future videos in the comments. If you've made it to this point, we want to take an opportunity to say thank you. Since you've stayed with us, here's a bonus. Always fill out the description field for the flow elements and variables to describe their purpose and where they are used. In the future, you will thank yourself for the helpful notes. Thank you for spending time with us. Please like and subscribe to our channel because we share weekly content to support your tech and Salesforce learning journey. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a new video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. Connect with us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and on 100daysoftrailhead.com, all of which are listed below. Thank you for learning with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.